Bigger. Good morning. The, uh, the date that you uh, took your air samples, uh, I believe you said was July 21st, 2008, is that correct? That is the date that we took the uh, air samples from the trunk to go into the Tedlar bags, yes. Oh. And that was the first sample? Uh, that is correct. No. Um, now, the way you did it, you just sort of cracked open the trunk and, and stuck a, uh, some sort of syringe in it and drew out an air sample. Yes, we opened the trunk maybe one inch, maybe a little further, just enough to get a, a, a needle. The, the syringe actually had a, a long needle, possibly um, about an eight inch needle on it, and we put that inside the trunk and pulled the air through that. So you did not open and inspect the trunk? Uh, no, we did not. So you were not aware that the trunk liner and the spare tire cover had been removed four days before? You didn't know that? I, I did not know that. So your air sample would have been from the trunk four days after the trunk liner and the spare tire cover had already been removed, uh, if, if in fact it was removed on the 17th, as the evidence has shown. Uh, that would be correct. How much is 250 microliters? Uh, can you give us an example of, uh, of what uh, we can kind of get an idea what a liter is. A microliter is what percentage or fraction of a liter? A, a microliter yeah. it is one millionth of a liter. Okay. Um, so uh, just trying to envision it, you know, you get a two liter Coke bottle, half that be a liter, and then a, 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 a microliter would be a millionth of that. Right. So. I'm, I'm sorry, what was the, the volume value that you were asking You, you for? said 250 microliters was what you drew of air. Oh, correct. I'm yes. trying to get an idea of how much that is. So um, the syringe diameter, internal diameter, would be roughly the size of a lead pencil and the length of draw on the, um, on the syringe would have been maybe a quarter of an inch. So it's, it's not, not very much air. It's a very tiny amount of air. And then you uh, injected that into a uh, a Tedlar bag, or, or I'm sorry, no, that's the one you took back directly to the lab, right? The first sample. I I, I think I've confused you. I'm sorry. The first sample you took. What did you do with it? Okay. The, the first the on the 21st we pulled two samples from the car. The first one was approximately one liter, and the second one was. 300 milliliters, about one third the size of the one liter one. Okay, and those were placed in the Tedlar bag. That is correct. Ah, and those were then um, taken to the lab and sampled. They were held by the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and a deputy, or a, I believe a crime scene technician, Mike Vincent, brought the 300 mil Tedlar bag uh, sample to. University of Central Florida on the morning of the 22nd. And now Dr. Voss had requested that you use a, uh, a device called a triple sorbent trap. Yes. But you didn't have that equipment. Uh, that is correct. Now the advantage of a triple sorbent trap is it allows you to test the chemical components of a much larger volume of air, correct? Uh, that is correct. With the triple sorbent trap, you use a pump and you pull air through a bed of adsorbent, in this case, three adsorbents, uh, Carbotrap, Carbotrap C, and Carbosiv S3. And uh, each of those adsorbents in the bed takes out different analytes. And so if you pull 10 liters of air through that trap, then you get the components that are in 10 liters of air. Um, and the advantage of that is you, you can, in effect, test uh, a large volume of air by just pulling the air through the, the triple sorbent trap, depending on how long you let it run and how the pump is set. Uh, that is correct. But you did not have that, that equipment or that capability of doing that? I did not. Now, in, uh, <coughs> in your analysis, though, even of the air sample itself, you indicated that you found some weak signals for organic compounds, correct? That is correct. Then you went to the next level, which was the um, the SPME fibers, SPME for the quote for it. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. Now those basically, as you described, are fibers that you essentially 
just expose to the ambient air and allow the chemicals that happen to be in the air to attach to the fiber, correct? That is correct. But again, that method, though better than the bag, is still not as a good at testing method as a triple sorbent trap, correct? It is a different sampling method and will not concentrate as large an amount of analyte. Therefore, you will probably receive a worse signal to noise ratio in the instrument response, a lower instrument response from the solid phase micro extraction fibers. But again, just like with the other method, you're not actually drawing air past the steamy fibers. You're just sort of letting them sit and letting the ambient air sort of absorb into them. That is correct. So that method, though better, still is not as good as a triple sorbent trap in getting, in finding out what's actually there. I would consider the triple sorbent trap a better sampling methodology for, especially for components that might be at low concentrations in an air sample. And would that also be the case for the carbon strips, that the triple sorbent trap is a better method than the carbon strips as well? That would be correct, yes. But would it be fair to say that you used the best method that you had available to you in order to try and determine the chemical components of the trunk sample? That is correct. Now, your sampling simply tells you what was in the air in the trunk. It doesn't tell you where it came from, correct? That is correct. So if there was a particular object in the trunk that you suspected the odor would come from, there were other methods you could use to test those individual items. If those individual items were isolated, then you could test the air above those items after giving them an appropriate time to equilibrate, and you could test what was coming from those individual items, yes. Equilibrate means basically you allow the amount of the compounds in the surrounding air to equalize to some extent with the amount that's in the object you're looking at. Basically, yes, that is correct. And one of those methods would be to place the item in question in a Tedlar bag and allow it to off-gas into the air for a certain period of time to determine what was in it. That would be an acceptable approach, yes. Now, even with the methods that you were able to use, and even with the trunk liner and the spare tire cover gone, you were still able to detect chloroform, correct? That is correct. And you were still able to detect the other chemicals that you referenced, TCE and dimethyl disulfide. Tetrachloroethylene and dimethyl sulfide, yes. I'm sorry, dimethyl disulfide. Dimethyl disulfide, I'm sorry. I was scribbling quickly. And you've indicated that even based on that very limited sampling, that those chemical constituents are consistent with the research that's out there about human decomposition. Those components are reported in the peer review literature as arising from human decomposition. But as you said, they can coincidentally come from other separate sources. That is correct. Now, you mentioned to counsel that chloroform can come from a reaction between bleach, as an example, and certain organic components. That is correct. And that's in some literature studying the effects of finding small amounts of chloroform in people that have swim in pools. I have seen one report, I believe it was from an Iranian journal, that did indicate that there was chloroform in swimming pool water and in people that had actually been in the pool. Yes. Anything? Thank you. 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 Thank you